together. Huh? See you, Nigeria. ladies who are in attendance here on the need for them to understand what it means to have uh, hygienic practices as far as menstrual menstruation is concerned. Many of them had had to use things like pieces of clothing, many of them, most of them use tissue paper and even the tissue paper they use and use and use and it's soggy, it's wet and then they get infection. The belief that we that we are But I tell you, after you do so, if you are not If you go somewhere in the country, go and wrap it back there. If it's of it. We want to dispose of them by flushing them, and we want to use one as long as possible to stretch it because we cannot afford to change it as regularly as we should. We have problems not just with the girls but even with our environment. And so we are encouraging these girls, we are speaking with these girls, we are happy that there's a hope that they can have something that is better, something that is hygienic, and something also that will be friendly to the ecosystem. So any sexual activity that involves an adult at all above the age of a teen and a child, child my name is Antonia Ojinabo and I run a support group for rape survivors called Tonya Bruce But Not Broken. So I'm here today at the Sea Hope Foundation to join my voice to talk about World Menstrual Hygiene Day. But I'm coming from the point of child sexual abuse. I want to encourage every survivor of child sexual abuse that your life has not ended, that you can live a normal life again and that what happened to you is not your fault. The shame doesn't belong to you, the shame belongs to the abuser. The abuser should be shamed and the victim should be hailed for speaking out. Because there are some psychological effects that happens to what you want to do child sexual abuse. You know, child sexual abuse steals from you. He robs you. He takes everything. He's like stripping you naked and dropping you in the middle of the road. And you have no help. But right okay. So one of the reasons why people don't talk about child sexual abuse is the stigma and the shame that is attached. The truth is, the stigma and the shame is very real. We're still a very traditional and religious society. We still stigmatize people who are raped. A lot of women don't want their sons to marry a girl who has been raped. So that is why we still have the hush-hush attitude towards it. A lot of mothers will tell their daughters not to talk about it because they will not find the husband, which is a life on the pit of hell. So if you live in Lagos states and you have any case involving any form of gender-based violence, there's a toll-free number you can call. The number is 08000 333 Yes. And if you are a child going through child sexual abuse and you need help, there's a number you can also call. It's a toll-free number. 0800-800-8001. Thank you. You see, when you find your voice, you will talk shamelessly. That time, it's not going to be a big deal. It's just going to be a chapter in the book of your life. So that time, you will start doing you will be older than Antonia, and you will tell your story without any fear, without any shame, because it doesn't define you. You maintain proper words. Proper words. Proper words. Proper words. This is the World Menstruation Menstrual Hygiene Day, and the theme for this year is the Menstruation in Normal Parts of Life. Today, we have been able to educate the girls on the fact and some myths, you know, that has been incorporated into the lives of a lot of girls. And it will surprise you to know that even in this 21st century that we are in, there are still some beliefs that are so awkward that people still go about doing. In the normal part of life, you can go about doing everything that you always do, even when you are in, are in your period. I have told you that is menstruation a taboo? No. I want to hear you loud and clear. Is menstruation a taboo? No. Is menstruation a dirty act? No. You know how to keep a proper menstrual I 
PG when having your menstruation. Please clap for yourself. Our practice since 2018 when we started this campaign and uh, with um, marking the uh, menstrual hygiene day May 28, 2018. That's been like five years now, and we've been doing it consistently every year, distributing and uh, holding this kind of awareness event to talk to girls about period uh, related issues, about sexual violence, about uh, prevention of child sexual abuse, and issues related to young people especially the young people that we work with are from low-income communities who are actively batting, battling period poverty. You remember when uh, we talked about it inside, the response was very high because these are things that they experience um, all the time. And so um, we distribute it to meet the immediate demands of the girls so that they can, uh, because it matters so much if a girl is able to uh, manage her period with a pad just a single month before waiting for um, the next month. And, and the one we distributed today, for instance, in Australia, is not to, to last again for two months or more.